gentlemen, welcome. How are you doing? Good. good Introduce plan, yourselves. Thanks. Tell us who you are and where you are from. Stig, take it away. Hi. I am uh, Stig Telfer. I'm working with Cambridge University. I'm just uh, an OpenStack HPC contributor there. So um, my, my background is um, in HPC and going back through supercomputing and scientific research, but also a little bit in, in how we can do that with OpenStack. So uh, that's, uh, what, that's what brings me here. Very cool. Blair. So I'm, I'm Blair Bethwaite. Uh, I'm a HPC consultant at Monash University. We run our HPC on OpenStack at Monash. And so that's why I'm here. Well, cool. We're definitely going to talk a little bit today about high-performance computing. You both mentioned it and why it's cool uh, and what you can do with it on top of OpenStack. But before we get into it, let's go into an example. Uh, Stig, you were talking a little bit about how you first got involved with HPC, about potatoes, of all things, and the beauty of potatoes. Why is potatoes relevant to high-performance well, computing? That, I mean, it's a good example because it says that science and uh, scientific compute, you don't really have to put it into a box. And... Um, I was working on a machine which was, um, it was a deep learning neural network algorithm machine and it was using the image processing to identify beautiful potatoes from ugly potatoes so that a supermarket could take them and they could pack them according to premium or economy. It was HPC, it had 28 processors in it. It was, um, I don't know how many gigaflops just to process those images, but um, it was an HPC application which didn't involve physics or science in any great depth. Absolutely brilliant. So you've, you've already hit on the core principle here. You said, you know, it took 28 instances, right? So high performance computing, what are we talking about? Give it to me in layman terms. Like how would you tell your mom about or your dad about actually what HPC is? I think uh, HPC is really anything that you can't do with your workstation or your laptop. You need a bigger machine. That's sort of the, the base definition. Other people branch off into many and specialized areas and divide it up into high throughput computing, high performance computing with tightly coupled networks are required, that sort of thing. But really, you know, you can, you can make it quite a broad church, I think. Yeah, there's, there's definitely an intensive component to high performance computing in, in whichever form it takes. So uh, I guess that it is computing that is stretching the, um, uh, the limits of the, uh, the system that you're running on to get the most out of it. Very cool. So talk to me, how big are we talking with HP? So, so we got Monash and Cambridge University. Obviously, this is something that scientists really care about, you know, being able to do their work on, whether it's from beautiful potatoes or I know you guys have chatted with NASA recently. What's happening at Monash and Cambridge, which is cool. First, give me the size of how, 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 much, how big are we talking here? How many servers are we talking about when you actually are talking about your HPC instance on OpenStack? Uh, is it's hard to say at Cambridge, actually. We have, um, we have a number of systems, and um, they, uh, I've, I've never actually rolled them all into one ball. So that's, I think that's what we are going to be doing fairly soon. So, are we talking um, hundreds or thousands of computers here to the, to the average person? Well, one of the systems that, um, that we have is, uh, is called Wilkes. It, is, uh, it was the number two system in the green 500 um, of the world's energy efficient supercomputers. So it's a big system. Um, it gets there through using a lot of GPU power. That machine is, um, I forget how many nodes, but it is a couple of aisles in the data center. So uh, it's, a, it's a big machine. We, um, we also do a lot of work with, um, uh, with high performance data analytics. And uh, those systems are equally big. I mean, we um, a million, million pound machines at a time. So, uh, so it's, it's, it's a So massive. lots of money and very serious stuff because obviously science is based on it. Blair, what about you? What at Monash? What, 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 what are we looking at? So I, I think, you know, we're maybe a, a little bit smaller, but I'm managed, managed by OpenStack at the moment. We have uh, maybe about 7,000 cores in total. Uh, the, biggest, the biggest single logical entity there is a, a new HPC cluster that we're just at the tail end of commissioning at the moment called Massive 3. And uh, that machine is maybe a little bit interesting because it has a, a whole pile of GPGPU as well in it. Um, and so that actually makes up probably the bulk of the computational um, muscle in that machine. So walk me through a little bit of the differences between, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this wrongly, but you know, the old HPC of way of doing things, you know, the, the grid-based systems, and it has a very long history, you know, it goes all the way back into physics and the way that they do their experiments, and now we've kind of got this new HPC on the cloud thing. What's different, what's new about HPC on the cloud? Flexibility is one of the key things. So, um, 
when you're supporting a diverse uh, population of users. OpenStack enables you to bring together a lot of different requirements into a single system. And for research computing, if, uh, if we were buying individual machines on a rack-by-rack -rack basis for a project and then another project and not really sharing the resource, we lose out. We don't get the utilization that uh, we could do if we were to build it all into a private cloud and then manage it using the software-defined infrastructure that OpenStack provides. Uh, that's what it does for us. Love it. Flexibility. Fantastic. Anything else? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the, the other thing that it does is it can lift your HPC operations. If you're going to actually run a managed HPC service atop of OpenStack, then it, it lifts that up into the sort of the, the new world of DevOps and continuous integration and so forth and deployment, which I think is actually, that's a really powerful thing and, and it's very useful in the HPC community, which is previously run with quite static environments, very little change, but can no longer go on doing that in the face of, particularly over the last couple of years, we've seen a whole pile of big security issues where it's no longer viable to keep just stay on the old kernel just because you know that's that's what we run on this system. Yeah. Excellent. It sounds, I mean, um, HPC is, it has this very sort of technologically advanced kind of image about it, but the system management is really very static, as you say. I mean, um, it hasn't really evolved in, in, a, um, in a massive way uh, since, uh, well, since whenever. Yeah, I mean, in, in HPC traditionally, the system management configuration is actually pretty much 95% in deployment of the node. So cool, what I think is exciting about this, and since we're on Super User TV, I guess it really would, boils down to actually how you're helping the researchers and scientists um, do their research better. So as a, as a bit of a game and a bit of fun, I'm hoping each of you can actually ask some questions of one another about your users and kind of what they're doing on it. Um, so take a minute, take a minute, we can, always, we can always do a cut here and then come back to it, but ask yourselves, ask each other a couple of questions on these topics. Hmm, okay. Oh well, I Shake mean, it up. We, we have we have everything, I guess you know, because it's sort of like they're they're a typical campus HPC resource where you've got users. Users on the one hand have some MATLAB code that is taking a long time to do on their desktop, or suddenly they want to do it ten thousand times for a parameter sweep or something like this, and uh, you know, so they then need to scale that out on a cluster or just even on other distributed resources. Um, that's probably, that's kind of actually the most common use case. And then there's, there's other people that are actually doing MPI or OpenMP type parallel programming, uh, others that are doing visualization, um, instrument data processing. We've got, got the lot, really. The list goes on and on. Quite a few users on your cloud as well. How many users are, are, are there on average in, in the Australia National Cloud? Well, so, yeah, so we run our infrastructure as part of the, the Nectar Research Cloud in Australia, uh, which is a bit of a pioneering project, started up in 2012, running OpenStack. Almost 10 data centers, right? Yeah, there's eight, eight nodes, actually. Eight nodes, got yeah, it, yeah. That's right. And uh, so at any given month on the Monash node of the Nectar Research Cloud, we have about 350 active projects on that. And uh, at the moment, in, the, in broadly speaking, in Nectar, there's over, uh, I think there's about 1,200 active projects on that research cloud. Fantastic. We have a, um, we have a very interesting uh, project in bioinformatics, which I was just thinking about, which uh, I'm looking at um, how we can bring that into an OpenStack environment in a way which is uh, as performance as possible. Looking at how we can do um, a kind of a genomics workload in, uh, Using, using the latest or the, the best of the uh, modern tools is uh, something that's of a huge interest in, within our group in Cambridge. So um, that's something that I'm going to be focusing on with, uh, with the team there. I'm, um, I'm really looking forward to that, that talk tomorrow, actually, Steve. That's something that we're very interested in, too. Brilliant. And so if people, obviously for the people who aren't here, what's the best way for people to get involved, especially with HPC and the scientific community? Well, we've, um, we've just... Within the foundation, we've just created the scientific working group. And the working group is, is not necessarily a direct point of contact, but it's an advocacy for how we can actually um, help scientists, researchers, who are looking at using OpenStack, looking at bringing OpenStack into their, um, their installations. And it's, it's really about how we can share information, how we can bring people together, 
and exchange ideas about the best ways of doing scientific compute in all its varied forms in an open stack environment. Yeah, we're trying to give, give some structure to the, the hallway conversations that we invariably have at every summit with more and more people starting to become very interested in moving their scientific compute or HPC onto OpenStack or somehow leveraging OpenStack alongside those other resources. Fantastic. So it's as easy as going to Google and typing in scientific-wg for the scientific working group. Throw an OpenStack there if you're uh, wanting to find it on Google. Uh, thank you both so much uh, for coming to the conference and thank you for you know, putting forth your time to make this a community initiative happen. Uh, obviously, OpenStack cannot do these things unless uh, good people like yourselves actually bring people together under a common umbrella and actually try to change the world for the better. That, that, that brings me to, to an interesting final point, perhaps, in that you know, back in, Nectar was quite pioneering back in 2012, going out and deploying OpenStack as a, as a community cloud to the research sector in Australia. And it was the community model in OpenStack that really made us make that choice. We had a small little group of people that were evaluating the options at the time. I was fortunate to be one of those people. And that was, it was really not about any particular technology thing. It was about the community and the open source model around it. Absolutely, and fantastic. it was a really great choice. Thank you both so much. We'll see you around the conference showroom. Excellent.